Hi everyone, I am MMS Mohammad Munirudin Sheikh, a professor of English in a government college of West Bengal government. Today I am going to discuss a poem written by John Keats. It is an ode, and you know, ode is one kind of addressing poem. Here the poet addresses to a person who is absent or dead or a absent thing or any lost virtue. And the address is supposed to be a living and breathing entity. And it seems that the writer speaks to it in direct way. So, John Keats is supposed to be a sensual poet. He is referred to as hypersensitive poet. And he is a nature poet next to Odsor. But the difference is that Odsor's viewpoint towards nature is Philosophical, he gauges in the interior world of nature, but Keats is not so philosophical. He actually deals with, or better to say, gauge over the superficial beauties of nature. He focuses on abundance of natural phenomena the leaves, the fruits, the flowers, the birds, the air, whatever may be, the natural phenomena. In fact, the superficial nature draws Keats's attention very much and he just gives a description of sappy nature, sensual nature, and in the poem, namely O to Atom, which is categorized in the headline Keats's 1890s poem, Odes. And it is the last one of this of that series. It is published in 1820, though it is written in 1819. Now the poem, the poem, the subject matter of the poem takes us to the very lap of nature, the autumnal nature. It is supposed that in an autumnal evening, Mr. Keats was walking along the path of nature and he observed the Saffiness of nature, sensuous aspects of nature. The nature is full of its gifts. So, Keats is tempted to write this poem and he has written this ode. Now, let's come to the text. The very first line season of mist and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of maturing sun. In the very beginning line, we see that the description of nature, it's a autumn season itself. The season is said to be of mist and mellow fruitfulness. If we look at the autumnal atmosphere, specifically during evenings or during mornings, then we will see the mist permits the mist permits the atmosphere. So naturally it is said to be the season of mist and mellow fruitfulness. Mellow meaning sappy. Fruitfulness meaning all sorts of flowers turn into fruits and the fruits are sappy. The fruits are ripe and all. So the season is said to be mist and mellow fruitfulness 
and again it is close bosom friend of the maturing sun. There is a friendship. There we have a copulation image. The image, the copulation is held in between two bosom friends. Bottom in one hand and the maturing sun on the other. Now, Keats is going to discuss or enumerate the productions of nature and we know the production is possible only when two sexes are coupled. The season is said to be female and the sun is said to be male. But maturity, the season, the sun must have the maturity otherwise it, it, it will not be able to produce, produce something. So in the second line we have the copulation image. Conspiring with how to load and place with fruits the vines that round the thatch eaves run. Both the sun and the season, I mean autumn, are planning. As we plan, as we human beings plan while before getting a child, the husband and wife plan and they take the baby, give, give, give birth to the baby. In the same way, the sun and the season are conspiring, meaning consulting. Consulting how to load and bless with fruits the vines that round the thatch eaves run. Thatch eaves meaning thatch, you know, thatch of straw over which the vine creepers normally grow. Got it? And the sun and the season overload, overload the creepers with excessive vines. To bend and with apples the most cottage tree. Again we see an apple tree and there are huge amount of apple and the apple tree is, is beside the cottage which is covered with, surrounded with trees and the trees are covered with moss, moss cottage tree. And the apple tree is being bent because of the excessive apples and feel all fruits with ripeness to the core. We are reading Keats's nature and ripeness is all in Keats's poem. If we read Orsothian poem, then we will see green to the very door, meaning Orsoth prefers the green nature whereas Keats prefers the ripe nature. It is because Keats is a pessimistic poem and also is optimistic poem. Poet. Keats depends upon the ripeness of nature and we know the next stage, next step of ripeness is falling down and it hints at the pessimism. Again, the sun and season conspiring to swell the goat and plumb the hazel cell. The goat, only the production of goat is not sufficient, it has to be swollen. It has to be swollen and the hazel, I mean nut, the nut cells are plumped, meaning it is also swollen with a kernel, sweet kernel. You know, within the cell of nut, we have some kernel which we normally eat. And both the sun and the season properly conspire, or better to say, consult how to swell the gourd and hazel and fill them with sweet kernel. Again, 
to set budding more. Budding meaning giving flowers. You know, flowers is the initial step of having fruits. So naturally, the sijin and the sun consults, sorry, consult for supplying non-stop budding. And still more, you know, the sense of continuity is hinted at. Later flowers for the bees. The bees collect honey and they collect honey from flowers and there must be non-stop supply, supply of flowers only then their collection will be going on and the process of and the process of making honey will be going on. So they, there must not be any lackage of flowers so the sun and the sijin work much, work hard to supply non-stop flower. So until until they think om days will never cease. Through the process of getting non-stop supply of flowers, the bees will be in the belief that there will be no lackage of supply and their warm days, meaning days of happiness, days of better to say hey days, will not stop. They will not be impoverished. They will not be falling into problem. So naturally, they are getting non-stop flowers, non-stop supply of flowers. For summers has overbeam their clamicell. Clamicell meaning hive, which is sticky, sticky cells. The honey, honey is supplied, honey is stored in the hives. Naturally, it is their clamicell which is over flowing with the honey. We have not seen the of amid the store. Sometimes whoever seeks abroad may find their the sitting careless on a granary floor. Now we are getting to have four successive images of autumn and you know autumn has been personified and number one image is the reaper meaning sometimes if we look towards the fields we will observe autumn in the granary field and the hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind. So number one image is winnower. Autumn is supposed to be winnower and it is just winnowing the harvest. While harvesting, while winnowing the harvest, their hairs are uplifted due to the wind coming from the winnowing machine. Yeah, so num number one, Number one image is the winner and if we look at the house, look at the outhouse of the rich farmers, then we will see the scene. Um, it's said to be winner. Actually, the scene of winnowing is the part of autumn. Here we may consider that the poet uses part for the whole. We are observing winner, meaning we are observing autumn itself. Now the second image is the image of a reaper and the lines are or on a half rift furrow sound asleep drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spared the next swath and all its twined flowers. These are the words which present second image. Second image of autumn and the image is of reaper. We know the reaper cut the crops in the field and 
there are flowers of poppies you know poppy is opium it is on kind of narcotic and if anybody takes the smell of the poppies for long time he will be better to say in a fainting condition the as the reaper is influenced by the fume of the poppies naturally his senses start to be deactivated and he droops or drows naturally his sight his sight cannot crop cannot cut the crop in proper order very often a line of crop is missed this is how the reaper cuts the paddy or wheat in the field and it is the second image and we can see that image if we look at the fields when the harvesting is going on then we can see that the farmers are working in the field in a state of drunkenness so the third image is the image of a cleaner image of a cleaner and the lines are and sometimes like a cleaner thou dost keep steady thy laden head across a brook these two lines cover up a third, cover up the third image the third image of glimmer so gleaner you know after harvesting is over the grains are they are on the floor and the poor people and the poor people go to the field and they sweep they sweep the grains with with dust and the the cloth of clay from there from that they collect some ground crops or better to say grains and this is another picture the cleaner has collected the grains and she has taken the burden over her head and she is walking along the path by the river better to say across the river and the burden the head the, the, the burden over our head is steady meaning it is not going to fall it is a magnificent scene we can observe when looking at the fields some women from the poor section of the society normally do such kind of activities of gleaner and the image of gleaner is the part of is part of autumn's autumn and naturally it is autumn itself the there are next two lines or by a cedar pressure with patient look the watches the last oozings hours by hours the fourth image age of the cedar pressure or cider pressure you know in our areas we we see the machine grinding the sugar cane in the same way in western world there are machines in which the apples apples are grinded and the apples juice are collected is sorry is collected in the same way a cedar pressure during the autumn the scene is visible around the western world and autumn is supposed to be a cider pressure the 
man who is putting the apples into the machine and he is doing so at the same time he is observing the dropping of the apple juice with slow motion and he is patiently observing the process. So these are the four images. Number one image is of Winwald. Number two image is of Reaper. Third is Gleaner and fourth is Cider Pressure. These four images constitute the autumn itself. There are so many scenes or images available during the autumn but kids mention only four and we have to consider we have to consider that we are observing these images when we are observing autumn itself. Now the second stanza where are the songs of spring? Uh, where are they? Think not of them, that was thy music too. The second stanza gives us the names of musicians available during the time of autumn. This line shows that autumn is very often expresses her grievances to better to the, to the poet because she lacks the music. But the poet confirms that she has music too. There are so many musicians, there are so many musicians which produce the music during the time of autumn. And while bird clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue. Then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn. The number one musician is gnats. Look at the background when the gnat sings. Moans, the word moans has been used. I have already told you Keats is a pessimistic poet and he never looks at the bright side of nature. He is always gloomy, sad at heart. So, when evening, during the time of evening, we see that the western side, western sky is somewhat reddish in color, which is said to be rosy hue. And the rosy color falls on the field, falls on the ground, from which the harvest has been done. Meaning, it is a field, stubble plain. Stubble plain meaning a field from which the grain has been taken out. And in during that time, the cloudlets, cloudlets float in the sky. During that time, the cloudlets float in the sky. It is in that time, the net is seen to be creating or producing sounds. Among the river shallows, born aloft or sinking as the light wind, lives or dies. The, the sound of the net does not come when it, it comes with a high tone and low tone. When the wind comes towards the listener, then the sound seems to be high. And when the wind is dying, then the sound comes in a low degree, in a low degree. So we have already seen number one singers, I mean musician of autumn. And we are going to get the second musician. And it is full grown lambs, loud bleat from hilly board, hilly area. Born meaning valley and the lamb, you know, small sheep is producing sound, producing sound from that hilly area. It is bleating, full grown lambs. It is, it is not 
lamb in the true sense of the term it is aged lamb and it is producing sound which is not very soothing to listen and his cricket sing the third musician is his cricket he is as you know plays boos and the cricket the cricket crickets are seen to floating over that hedges or bushes and during that during their floating they create sound and now we treble soft meaning sound is being minimized the, the soft sound is divided with three meaning treble soft the robin red breast whistle from a garden craft yeah number fourth singer is robin red breast it is singing from the from a garden and the last line and gathering solos to twitter in the skies gathering solos to twitter in the skies it means the solos are gathering in the sky and they are twittering meaning they are making sound and they are in the sky it indicates that autumn is going to be ended this line indicates kids to be a pessimistic poet because kids is going to say that autumn is going to be ended the abundant autumn the autumn with fruits and flowers and leaves is going to be ended the autumn which is said to be season of mist and mellow fruitfulness is not going to be continued there is a proverb namely a solo cannot make a summer meaning if you look at <clears throat> the sky and see one solo you cannot say that summer has come you cannot say that summer has come here solos are going upward hovering in the upper sky it means autumn is going to be ended so we have seen the natural phenomena available during the time of autumn and in the end of the poem we have seen that what kids is a pessimistic poem under the surface of abundance and sappy nature the, the ring of pessimism is ringing so this is the poem thank you